Hello and welcome to Techspresso episode 20 something. 20 I'm your host Sean. Two ish. And I'm the other guy, Chris. Now, as you've noticed, it's been quite a while. We've gotten a little older. <laughs> I've gotten much fatter. I've actually, I've been watching Benjamin Button while I'm sleeping in hopes that I'll start <laughs> aging backwards. So keep your fingers crossed on that. What have you been up to while we're off, Chris? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> um. I don't know. I was sounds asleep, great. All right, so uh, I just I recently got a uh, Chromecast, and I'm gonna do a little review of it right now. So I'm here to talk to you today about my latest impulse buy, the Google Chromecast Media Streamer. So let's start with setup. Google could not have made it easier. All you have to do is plug it into an open HDMI port on your television, and if you have HDMI version 1.4 and up, it actually pulls the power straight from your TV. Or if not, Google also includes a micro USB cable and power adapter if you need it. From there, you just visit the URL on your computer or mobile device to download the configuration app and punch in your wireless code. The last step is to install a Chrome extension from your browser to allow casting. In my experience, it works very well with YouTube and Netflix. Unlike some laggy, buggy experiences like I've seen on my Google TV, the Chromecast usually works whenever I want. Um, it also works with Google Play services like Google Play Movies and TV and Google Play Music. And I found that it works well from Android devices, but obviously since there's no uh, apps for iOS, the only supported apps for iOS devices right now are YouTube and Netflix, which both work well, but it's kind of limited. There is the ability to play back local files by simply dragging a file into the browser and casting a tab. But at this moment, um, it's kind of buggy, a little laggy. Um, it's not really comparable at all to uh, Apple's AirPlay service. And the final caveat is that it does not currently allow any tab casting from any mobile versions of Chrome. All in all, for $35, it's a well-performing little device, and I'm sure we'll see its functionality expand with new services and features in the near future. Um, HBO Go and Hulu Plus have already been reported as coming to the device very soon. So, that's a wrap! <laughs> I didn't write an end either. <laughs> this year at E3, Sony announced remote play for any PS4 game to your PS Vita. A helpful Reddit user named Mojo8675309 posted a great guide for getting remote play working from your PC to your PS Vita. This requires just a few steps like setting up a Sony developer license and setting up the development tools on your PC. Once you get that done, you can compile the program, which was created by Retro Zelda to uh, get any application that you have running on your PC, running on your Vita, which means you can play any emulated games or any of your Steam games. Um, the frame rate isn't perfect, but I'll post some tips. I'll post the full guide and some tips on techspresso.net for optimizing it to get the best experience. Back to you, Sean. All right, well, thank you for joining us for what I think is probably the best episode of Techspresso ever, as long as uh, quality relates directly to the length of the episode. <laughs> um, as always, you can visit us on our website that we never update at techspresso.net. And I think we do a few other things, but I don't remember what their URLs right now. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and a bunch of other things that might not work anymore or oh, even okay. be around. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Miro, is that still a thing? I think we're on there. All right. Here we are on the front page two years ago. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I swore. But I'm bow bow. But now bow bow. Chicka chicka. <laughs> I guess that's it. <laughs>